All right, ladies and gentlemen, here she is. Late, but we finally got her. The brand new super laser nut. Today we're gonna find out how fast it'll go, how good it jumps, and how good it does off-road. Always an honest review from your fellow veteran, L to the W. If you guys missed my unbox and review video uh, or my first impressions, check it out. It's worth a shot. I think I did some pretty cool B roll on that one. Plan on doing it here too. But you, no, you've already seen it, so hopefully you enjoyed it. But I, I want to make a note of something. See right here, this is a silver screw on this. This is a black screw. Silver screw is reverse thread. I don't know why. For some reason, that's just the way it is. There's one here in the front, there's one in the back. Uh, I was actually going to move these shocks inboard to try to take some stress off of here. I realized there's no upper control arms. I started thinking about what's actually keeping everything from bombing out. And it did look like the shock was taking the load. So I was going to move it in, but it pushed it down quite a bit more. Moved the A-arms down, which it makes sense. That's what happens when you move these in. But it makes it easier for the suspension to move. I mean, I could have taken some preload off. They pretty much had these things cranked down. But what I ended up doing is I set the dupe, the droop screws. So now we have a nice flat uh, control arm here. And while I was editing the video, or while I was rendering, waiting for the software to do its thing, I did watch a few videos and I saw two channels bust the dog bone out of here. Or I think I think one lost the dog bone. Might, maybe it was, I can't remember. And then I know one person shattered this. And I think that might have to do with not setting the droop on here and it going down and extending past so i would recommend set get your droop screw set before you go out here and run this so we'll see we'll see if what i did works uh, i'm starting to get some sprinkles out here this is florida it rains every day this has just been impossible to try to get out here and film but i'm gonna try to get this done for you uh i got the gps warming up trying to find satellites we're gonna do a speed run uh we're gonna set up the KCRC ramp, we're gonna do some jumps, and then we're gonna head off into the woods and do some off-roading. So something I didn't notice until now, I missed on my review, uh, the battery trays are extremely tight. They just fit these 5,000 milliamp hour spectrum packs. Now you might be able to get something a little bit bigger in there, but one thing I don't really like is the way this is dual tray. So if you wanna run a single 6S, it's kinda of gonna throw, throw the weight and balance off you know so where do you put it in the front the rear and not upset the balance I don't know it doesn't make sense that they even give you a jumper that you could run a single six so I think the best thing is just to run two uh 3s packs but yeah I, I didn't realize that. I mean these barely fit in I put a rubber band because I, I mistakenly got this one as a balance lead instead of the actual g2 smart uh battery so I always put a rubber band to make sure it doesn't get caught up in stuff. And with that rubber band on there, it, 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 I did barely fit. It was only because it's clearanced a little bit for the strap. But yeah, I didn't notice that. And it's raining. Well, let's see if we can get the speed run done. All right, finally, GPS is working again. 
I really do not. Look at this. It's just how hard is it to make a friggin' app that works? All right, let's double check. All right. Wow. Oh yeah, I also last night I adjusted the uh, toe and toe out. That left wheel was like way out, so I did do adjust that. Looks like it can use a little more in because you see that when it backed up, it did that crazy maneuver. But, so, what's your predictions? Here we go. Man, that is impressive looking going down the road. Woo! Wow. Oh, this is really gonna suck. This thing's brand new and everything's wet. Oh. Man, so based on what you saw, what's your prediction? What's your prediction? I'm thinking 45. I don't know. I haven't seen any. I haven't. I haven't seen any speeds posted on this. All right. This is the slowest thing in the world. Fifty-four. Whoa. All right. Man. I didn't see that. All right. See how it jumps. Ooh. Ah, and I forgot to mention that. Uh, when I put the batteries in here, I felt like this thing was extremely, extremely nose heavy. And it is. Most of the time when you jump a car, you can just hit the ramp and you know let it kind of glide off. But this one's wanting to nose down. See like that? And that's probably how. Everybody's breaking stuff on the front. There you go, if you hit it with some speed. There we go. That launched kind of neutral. We're just going to do a couple more jumps and then we're going to move on. Ah, that's not good. It just is such a solid thud when it hits. That's why I don't really think that this is a good uh, RC for jumping. Oh. One more. There we go. I'm going to run it down through here real quick, but I'm going to put this ramp up because look at all that rainy goodness uh, I think's coming this way. Oh, yeah, I think I have to double down on my initial assessment of uh, it is not a, see, everybody's going to have their own term of basher. When I say bashing, I'm talking about like 10 feet plus in the air. Even this thing, I don't think it's really good at five feet. The, the, the little jumps we just did that were probably like maybe three feet, this thing was slamming down pretty good. But 
where this thing's weight comes into play is ah, look at this this thing's already killed oh man That's where it gets fun. Yeah. Man, I think I might be delayed in getting this video out because I think I'm going to have to uh, go home, charge the batteries, and uh, wait for the rain to clear, and then I can go do like my, my off-road assessment. I cannot believe it ate the batteries that fast. But yeah, if I, I can't remember if I already mentioned it, but this is kind of like the sledge. A sledge is a heavier RC, heavier than like the uh, Creighton and all that, and it does great ground pounding. Uh, that to me is kind of like this thing's strong suit too, ground pounding, man. Running out here, this is where its weight helps keep it planted and staying put oh look at that man we already scratched the crap out of the bottom out there and the rain is here it has started oh i better be careful man well hopefully we got so much rain me ripping up this grass a little bit it's not gonna yeah Oh man, it launches off of that perfect. I can't go down there because it's full of water. Ask me how I know. But it is planted at, at speed going through the grass and all that. It is planted. But guys, uh, look, it's flashing now. Got rain there. You can see it trickling down. I am in the rain. So, it might delay me getting this video out, but. I'm not sure if it's always like this or because the ground's wet. But this is... Yeah, I better... For those of you that are new in the hobby, you really don't want to draw your lipos down past like 30%. So I think we need to wrap it up there. Go home, charge this. Hopefully the rain will pass and we can get back out here. Now, if you want to know how bright those lights are, look at that. Look at it in the woods. Now this is out of breath. I had somebody made a comment like I was walking to get an airplane and I was out of breath. I'm out of breath here because one, I just got done shooting my B-roll. So I had the 360 camera out there on a the pole and I was running alongside and in front of like running with this thing. And then uh, I just went all the way back out to the car to swap out the 360 for the GoPro. So yeah, now I'm winded. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's blasted. I hope this is going to come out. God, I left the house not that long ago and the sun was all the way out. And now it's thundering and storm clouds. So I know, jeez, our friends up north got it rough because, you know, they got the cold, the snow, and and probably, I would say, their condition is worse because in the wintertime, the plastic gets brittle, so it makes it hard to run these things, but yeah, I got to deal with heat, humidity, <laughs> rain, 
probably got some snakes crawling around through here. Ooh. Oh, man. Durability testing. I, t I hate these damn vines through here. Jeez. Hear that? Oh, God. And I thought it was going to hop that. Like. Jeez. This looks like a good place to run this. If I don't get stuck in that stuff. Ah! You know, a gyro might help this thing just a wee little bit here on the soft stuff. Because it is fishy talent everywhere. <laughs> it's not impossible. It's not impossible, but... I think it definitely could help. Oh man. I'm not sure if I said it earlier, but yeah, my suspicion on this thing not being a jumper is right. It's, it did okay, but I mean, it just sounded horrible. It doesn't really have the best air control. It's kind of nose heavy. Oh, that brings me to another thing I think is important to point out. So, you know, I went home, charged up the batteries, and I, I went to put a one of my 6S packs in here. None of them will fit because those battery trays are no longer than that 3S pack that's in there. So, I don't think you're going to get a 6S pack in you. You're stuck running the two 3S packs. So that's kind of unfortunate. I, I was really hoping just to run one battery pack, run it in the back and see if I could take some weight off the front of this thing. <laughs> oh golly no well i feel the rain the rain kicking back again uh Uh, I think it's time to uh, head back. Uh, yes, rain's coming, so I'll see you back at on the bench, and I'll give you my final thoughts. All right, so what do you call it when you have two laser nuts? These nuts! Oh! <laughs> All right, so what do I think all in all? I think it's a good RC. It's cool, it's fast, it's powerful, it, it runs really well. Uh, everything works out of the box. So that part I have absolutely no complaints about. I love the styling, the looks, the, uh, you know, like the little carbon fiber touches and stuff like that, the realistic cockpit. I love all the way that works. Uh, these shocks and that look really, really nice. You know, it's a nice aluminum. They feel nice and strong. Same with the shock tower braces, all that seems like for that it's really put well put together now to, but to me it just has more negatives than positives uh and this is just my opinion and it just i'm just trying to weigh the balance between what like people are looking for and, and expect out of a car you know at this price point it is very expensive for a 6s car it's not an exb it's not you know it's not a like big air basher 
I would not buy this thing to launch it off a ramp and try to catch air. You know, if that's your idea what an RC car is, don't do it to this one. You know, you don't have any kind of upper control arm for strength or anything like that. All you have is this little metal bar here that's holding all that together. And I guarantee people are going to launch this thing in. That's, that's going to be a failure point right there. Uh, it's just too heavy uh, of an RC for that. Uh, now, one of the cool things with this, to me, is also one of the big downsides of this thing is this, this, this body. I do not like the way it flips up. This thing is just too big for this. It doesn't come up and lock into place, so when you're putting batteries in, it just wants to fall down and smash on your hands. I don't like that. I just wish it would just be four body pins and come off. And that also goes into, uh, too, back here with the spare tire. Because the way this body pops up, you can't keep the spare tire on here. I don't find it really acceptable to have to undo that every time you're in here, because you're in and out with batteries all the time. So why make the tire have to come off? It just doesn't work for me, sorry. Uh, just make the body come straight off and s skip this goofy grasshopper leg looking thing sticking out the side and that. And I know one thing this kind of bothers me and this is gonna bother a lot more people too, is these battery trays. You have this solid piece right here that really limits what you can do with this. Um, I know some people are going to probably cut that out and then you can put your 6S in here but then it's going to slide and I'm pretty sure there's going to be people, maybe even Garage Life RC will come up with a system uh, to get rid of this or to redesign this thing so you can fit with just like a single 6S battery because uh, this this is it's it's, it's kind of narrow and it's, it's only long enough like all my 6S packs are too long to fit in here and that really sucks. I'd rather just run my single 6S that has more milliamp hour and I can get better runtime out of it than what I'm getting now. Because runtime with the the 5,000 milliamp hour spectrums, it just it's not that great. It just it's really not. But uh, other than that, I'm happy with the electronics. The motor seemed plenty powerful. It pulled great. I mean, it pulls this thing around no problem. The ESC, you know, plenty of power there. This servo is absolutely massive, and I didn't have any problem with it turning the wheels, doing what it needed to, and getting this thing to go down the road. Um, I did forget to get, or er, well, because of the rain, I didn't get motor temps and stuff like that. So, sorry about that. You know, sometimes things happen, but I still would like to see a fan on this motor. Uh, cheap insurance, man. Cheap, cheap insurance. I'm just kind of really torn on this thing. I, I like it, but. It is crazy expensive for a 6S. Is it worth more money, $100 more than, say, the, the Creighton 6S and the Big Rock 6S? I don't know. You're going to have to be the judge of that. You spend the money. To me, I don't think I would have bought it yet. I would wait for maybe Horizon to have a sale. That's even like the same thing I did with my other laser nut. At whatever, $500 or something? I think it was just too expensive. I got it on a, a good scratching den or some kind of sale. And to me, it was worth it at that price. This thing, uh, I, I have a hard time justifying or telling people to buy it at the price it's at today. I mostly got it right now because of the channel and, you know, trying to do this stuff for people and, you know, trying to grow the channel. You want to have good, interesting stuff. So <laughs> having new stuff on there is kind of important. So I jumped on it now instead of waiting for the price jump uh, drop. But if it's not important to you to have it right away, I'd probably wait and see if a sale pops up at some point in time. Um, it's not a bad RC. It is well put together. It does have some shortcomings. I just feel like the shortcomings are a little bit more than what it should be at this. But, you know, you, you have to make the decision for yourself. Take the info that I gave you. See, does it bother you? Does it... Uh, maybe not bother you is you know are you happy with the way it runs not happy do you agree with some of what I'm talking about and you just make make up your mind if this is the right RC for you I will just say though if you're gonna buy a car because you want to launch this thing 10 plus feet in the air I wouldn't buy it I really feel you're gonna be disappointed you know you don't have the extra security of a upper control arm here to help hold all this together you only have this bar right here uh, which 
to me it's just going to be the, the your failure point for all this stuff but uh, it does appear uh, like i said some of the videos i watched one person lost a dog bone one shattered the front uh it does seem like maybe setting the droop helped because i didn't break anything so everything worked as it needed um, it's a beautiful rc everything worked i'll give it that i'm just really not a fan of just pivoting body the the, the wheel being in the way and the, that battery tray just so much stuff that i feel like needs tweaking on this thing to really make it and then it's also the price is it worth like a hundred dollars more than the other 6s cars in the lineup so like i said i just keep it honest try to share my opinion on stuff i'm not going to give it a rating score i'm not going to say buy it don't buy it that's up to you is it how you feel is it worth that money to you all i can do is show you like how it runs how it jumps and just kind of give you my feeling and how it responds to the way I drive and stuff like that and hopefully that helps you make an informed decision if you want to purchase one of these. It is a beautiful RC, it is fun to drive, I'll give it that, but uh, I, there are some things I, I think could be better and I think there's more of that than needs to be on this. So that's my, that's my opinion, that's my take on this new laser nut, but I'm going to keep it, have some fun with it. Uh, Maybe I can work up a way to get rid of this system. <laughs> All right, everyone. Appreciate the support. Thanks for watching. Check out the links down below. Have you some pretty cool discount codes. If you shop Amazon, set my page as your home. Just go Amazon, be my home page. Yeah, my storefront will be your home page, and I get a commission for driving here. You know, you go buy whatever you need to, man. Your soap, your shampoo, your dog food, whatever. Uh, it, it helps me buy these things. I'm not sponsored. These cars like this i buy and purchase with my money to share the hobby with everyone so thank you for support thanks for watching hope to see you next one